live from SABC Studios in Auckland Park, Johannesburg. Welcome to this week's first edition of The Watchdog. My name is Vuyom Vogo and on the show tonight... Situation is just deteriorating and the potholes are just becoming a nightmare. Bax Mbawizi, Mr. Fear Focal, Resmataz, Mr. Fixit is now adding Valazonke to his titles and nicknames. The Transport Minister, Figila Mbalula, is my guest this evening. The Watchdog starts now. Transport Minister Figila Mbalula says the newly launched Operation Valazonke targeted at closing all potholes around the country, will be closely monitored to ensure its integrity and accountability. The department and stakeholders launched the campaign in Fadabil Park in the Val today. This in response to a national pothole crisis, especially in local areas. Potholes, a daily nightmare for motorists, also contributing to road fatalities, for Ianakhang is one of the countless areas littered with potholes, not only compromising motorist safety, but also costing them financially. Some of the holes are so big they have two bedrooms. It's just a joke. Actually now, I'm from making a quotation now, um, potholes damage my rims and I have four broken rims right now I have to fix and they cost like 8,000 rands. The potholes is very, very bad. We can't drive. And finally, their cries are heard a massive national campaign. It's a massive drive, uh, very ambitious, and uh, we know that we are going to succeed uh, because uh, we've got to bring the issue of the portals on the agenda uh, for the immediate and the long term. The Mfuleni mayor blames underused budgets, poor oversight and mismanagement for the pothole crisis. One of the things that we were not doing right as a municipality, it was putting a budget that must maintain or build new roads. So last year we had a very awkward situation where one of our departments didn't spend the money that was supposed to be spent. As the work to fix potholes get underway, a new reporting app. You have two apps. So you have the Roads Authorities app, which the, it will, it, it, it's being rolled out currently to all the nine provinces and the metros and the local municipalities. So they are registering on that as road authorities. So what, what they will be able to do is to be able to identify where the problems are. And when the road, when the road user reports on the public app, a pothole in a specific area, it will be, we will be able to, from Sunroll End, we'll be able to workflow it to the right province for that pothole to be attended to. Mbalula says the initiative is not about electioneering, but improving service delivery. It's not elections, it's an outcry. We live with it. You are a driver, I'm a driver, you've got a relative, I've got a relative, I've got friends who have been affected with their car punctures and all of that as a result of portals all over the country. Now, as a government that is caring, we've got to respond to that. Motorists welcome the project. We are very happy for that because some places you can't drive on the road, you must go on the pavement. We will see when it happens, yeah, because there's every time we hear promises, promises, but then nothing is happening. There are, there are problems for us. And if really, as they have started today, they can just fix the, the street, it would be bad. No clear budget has been allocated so far, but Transport says they are still negotiating with Treasury for more money to be allocated. For now, they are using part of the 11 billion rand set aside for roads in the country. Patricia Fasahi, SBC News, in Van der Beel Park, outside Verenigen. A process from resident in the northwest province has been doing what Figila Mbalula and his team are now promising to do at his own expense. Dirk Fenter, who fixed 2,500 potholes last year, says he's motivated by the desire to keep his town in a good condition. The ripple effects of HIV, I mean COVID-19 rather, have however dwindled the support that Fender has been receiving from good Samaritans and local businesses.
67-year-old Dirk Fenter has been patching potholes in Poch of Strom for nearly a decade. He has done this without receiving support from the Drogwe local municipality, whose job it is to maintain the town's infrastructure. Fender says he's been supported by local businesses in the form of donations. But the after effects of the COVID-19 pandemic saw those businesses withdrawing their support due to unaffordability. However, this has not deterred Fender. You see, from the beginning, uh, the potholes bother me a lot. And if you want to do it with your brain, you will never do it. You have to do it with your heart. Fender creatively recycles leftover material dumped on the side of the roads during road construction and he uses it to patch the potholes. He then uses the donations to supplement the material when there's a shortage. His good initiative has created jobs for five men, some of whom had lost their jobs due to the COVID-19 pandemic. From Corona, the lockdown was making uh, other things because now I didn't get, uh, I get another job now because I was lose that job. It's a permanent income. Um, the car guard that I did is, is unreliable. His selfless deeds have not gone unnoticed. I'm very excited, you know. I've been a victim of potholes. We are very excited about the work they do. Five years ago, the JB Marks local municipality said that it was considering working with Fender, but this undertaking was never fulfilled. Due to changes in administration in the municipality over time, there could be a loss of information and breakdown in communication between the municipality and Mr. Fender. In towns such as Lichtenberg and Mahigeng, potholes are also the order of the day. The motorist's plea is for government to consistently maintain the roads to avoid potholes such as this one, which some may very well mistaken for a fish pond. Silwane Khachau, SABC News, Mahigeng. In a bid to boost tourism and the local economy, residents of seaside towns on the Guadalupe Natal South Coast are rolling up their sleeves to help clean up their towns. Their initiative, named Tidy Towns, focuses not only on maintenance of public amenities, but they also repair potholes and roads. The South Coast has always been a popular beach holiday destination. Its golden beaches along the inviting waters of the Indian Ocean and subtropical climate are some of its main attractions. But tourist numbers have dropped in the last few years, even before the COVID pandemic. Locals put the blame on the water outages and the decay in some of the small towns. Residents and businesses decided to take action. They started tidy towns, Shelley to Margate, and importantly, received the buy-in from the local municipality. A project is identified, the municipality gives the green light, and local engineers, businesses and residents go to work. Their expertise, equipment, tools and workforce are offered free of charge. We work with um, Rainconian municipality, they've got the, the, the roads department, and they've got their specifications in terms of the output and their standards. So our input is to assist in terms of the design of the layer works and the standard which ties into the local municipality's uh, uh, requirements and their expertise. This municipal access road to St Michael's Beach was a major hazard after a burst water pipe was repaired three weeks ago. Tidy Towns repaired the road in four days. It's very important to our community. Um, we all have businesses in the area and the, the local people support our businesses. So it's nice to give back something without getting back anything because we've been here for so many years. The municipality admits that their limited resources don't allow them to get to all the road repairs. It's a very uh, 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 a good working relationship and uh, we, it's, it's, it's not even formalized but we trust each other in such a way that uh, at any time uh, they, they approach us and say we want to do this and we give permission. Where well, we have to give permission, we give permission to them. Tidy Towns also tackled a regional road which was closed for three months and which forced businesses to close. After the uh, floods we had in April, 
Um, there was a large section that washed away uh, closer to the Margate uh, area, which has cut off uh, the Ramsgate and Port Edward uh, community. Obviously, uh, everything that goes on at the moment is affecting our businesses. So um, our motto is basically, if it's broken, we're going to fix it. And um, yeah, as a community, um, we just got involved and we're working alongside municipality. The initiative has also helped create employment. Potholes and beach maintenance require more hands. Hey, this place, it was lots of mess. So we cut the grass, cut the bushes, pick up all the bottles, papers, all around the beach. They break some bottles, drinking all around you. So now we came to the town to clean up all this area, to clean all the beaches, to, to make it so nice and clean and shiny. This. Residents say improved municipal infrastructure will lead to more investment and economic growth in towns such as St. Michael's on Sea. And another spin-off for the tidy town was the opportunity to host the Master Surfing Competition, which was held at the weekend. Renee Heiner, SABC News, St. Michael's Beach. Fikir Mbalula is in studio to talk about his uh, porthole project. So you've added Valazonke to Mbawizi, to Fearful <laughs> Call, to <laughs> Razmataz. Yes. No, Raz Razmataz was a great success. A fearful goal uh, was uh, tested but not given a chance. Uh, fix it is on track. And uh, Valazonga is just but part of it. So uh, when you feel and you come and tell me that in Port Elizabeth and uh, everywhere else and everyone else says that, yes, uh, we see a dent on the portals, we know that government will have delivered a, a good service to the people. Uh, tell us, I mean, how, how did, where did the idea come from? Who sat in what room, discussed what, and then said, this is how we're going to proceed? All uh, 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 government layers, national government, and uh, all provincial embassies, we sat and then uh, conceptualized this idea. The instruction came from the president uh, that uh, we must take up the task of uh, reinforcing the country in relation to the fight against portholes and closing portholes because as a national government and uh, Sandra, we don't have a challenge in relation to the national roads. They are in a pristine condition. Our challenge is at the regional roads and the municipalities. So the president instructed myself and the minister of finance uh, to back us up of course, financially, uh, to roll out a program uh, to deal with portals. Given the outcry in the imbizos, we have been going uh, to throughout the country, and then uh, he then gave the instruction. So we will give a report to, to uh, cabinet about the rollout. Um, we have uh, given this program six months to evaluate. So talk to me in the next six months and we see where the country will be in terms of the graph and the dent will have made on portals. But we realize that from an engineering perspective also, uh, some of the roads, are, they've just left. I mean, uh, you know, their lifespan is gone. So we just have to redo the entire road. So it's a mixed plan, portals, but some of the roads must be redone altogether. Now, from your conversations with Treasury, are they promising or have they given you additional money? Uh, my understanding, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that you have an 11 billion allocation already. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to do now? Are, are they going to give you more money because you're taking on? Well, our negotiations with Treasury are focused on uh, the project portals, which we call Sivala to give us extra money, but we do have money. Uh, which is already allocated and committed to the new roads. So we have sort of tried to reprioritize in terms of that 11 billion to focus on potholes uh, uh, in the different provinces. As you see, the program taking off today, it did take off in all the nine provinces. Some of the provinces have been already uh, on the campaign in terms of closing potholes. So Treasury we expect them in our negotiations to add money to the kitty for Sanral to implement. 
And if Sandra were to do this uh, from the upper, it is an unfunded mandate. So for Sandra to do it, it means there must be extra allocation because that is not their mandate to fix local and regional roads. So should that come, it will add on the work that uh, is continuing. So the next six months is going to be important and finalizing the model. And also, as you prepare for the medium term budget, there is what is called an unforeseen uh, expenditure. So in terms of our presentations and the preparations, we have put the portals into that. So we think that will get a positive result uh, going forward. Even though that discussion is not concluded, but uh, there is a task before us and a mandate given to us to execute. So we don't wait for that. So we are implementing with the resources that we have and redirect to close the portals where there is an outcry, like R57, where we were this morning. Uh, I mean, you, you are undertaking this big project. I mean, you heard from some of the insets we played earlier, uh, our, our colleagues from uh, KZN, our colleagues in uh, the Northwest and in Funder Bale Park where, where you were. I mean, people expressing, you know, views, obviously they are not happy um, uh, with the porthole situation in, in, in our country. But then you're now creating an expectation that something very real and big is going to happen. But this is in an atmosphere where the economic situation in the country isn't good at all. And it could actually uh, uh, get worse. Aren't you raising people's hopes, uh, but in an environment, a situation where you may in, in fact not be able to actually meet your targets or deliver on this? We will deliver on this. Um, um, our record in the next six months will speak for itself. Uh, we have done our homework uh, with the provinces. Uh, the major obstacle you are talking about funding, uh, with uh, reprioritization, we will be able to close the portals in the main uh, arteries of economic activity uh, in the country. We know where the problem is. Provinces don't prioritize properly, and we all agree about that. And then a little bit spent, and which we can, to close the portals uh, uh, will help us. Sandral, with their ex engineering expertise, will be able, in terms of the data that we collect, uh, which were almost there, about 95%, to tell us where are the portals, which are the roads that require redoing and all of that. Of course, money has been there, but uh, it has been spent not wisely in relation to this work. So we will grapple with that particular task going forward as we implement. But uh, we intend to make a huge dent in the main roads in the country to ensure that uh, the portals are closed. There's no reason why we shouldn't do that in Johannesburg City to close the portals. The city should come to the party, Eguruleni, Etequini, uh, Cape Town. They have the money, the metros, Buffalo City. Uh, but the issue of the roads has not been getting prioritization. So we are getting down there, talking also with the municipalities to come to the party, which they will. Uh, why, though? What, what is your analysis? Where has that money, where, where, where have monies that have been allocated gone to? In other words, uh, why is there so much under expenditure um, in, in, in this area? Where is the money going to? Or what happens to the money? Well, uh, Vuyo is not, uh, you see the money when you look at the, the uh, municipal infrastructure grant and you look at their priorities, roads in particular, and uh, fixing potholes is not there. And uh, uh, particularly in the municipalities that can afford. And uh, in terms of our dashboard, we will be looking at municipalities that can afford. Those that cannot afford, we will enter into memorandum of understanding with them in order to boost their fight against uh, potholes, closing potholes. That is what we're going to do. Um, but the municipalities need to reprioritize and ensure that in their budget, the issue of potholes and the road maintenance find expression uh, in their work. Um, but who's going to sit on them and make sure that they actually do that. One well, thing we, to just we have, make a call, we, we, we have Sandra focused on that. We have a steering committee that is meeting fortnightly. 
uh, that will be focused on that and uh, that look into the money that is there in the system and at the same time uh, whether that money is spent wisely in relation to the outcry of portals in the country. And uh, where there is a shortfall, we come in uh, with support. So uh, it's going to be uh, a dashboard that is live. Uh, through the app that we have seen. It's, not, it's, a, it's an interactive app with the public, but also an app that uh, resides within Sunral to say that uh, here is the crisis and uh, we attend to it. We have this money here, but it is not being utilized. And the roads that we also build at local level and uh, whether they are up to standard. If you look at R57 today, the base in terms of the road from an engineering perspective is proper, solid, but the outer layer, the top one, that's where you've got the cracks and the potholes, uh, precisely because it's poor workmanship and lack of a, a proper advisory from an engineering perspective, which are the things that uh, we intend to capacitate uh, the provinces and the municipalities to do. It is not uh, a small uh, project, uh, but it's not the question of not doing anything about it and just fold your arms and look at it. I mean, I said on social media one time when people were talking about potholes and all of that at local municipalities, I said, no, I'm not responsible for that. I deal with N1, I deal with N3, N14, go and check those. Uh, immediately when there is a problem, I come in. And then uh, people answered me, they said, then you don't know what you are doing. Because as the minister responsible, even though you are constrained to a certain extent by cooperative governance, given the spheres of, of, of government, what is important for you is to take charge and lead this crusade. Because there is a crisis in regional roads and local roads uh, in terms of this. I was in Van der Beel. Business people, white, black, came and said, we want to work on these roads with you. We are going to partner with you. The goodwill is out there. All what is important is for us to be visible. So Valazonke is going to uh, do that. And uh, after six months, you tell me whether we achieve the results. So uh, we mobilize every penny, every resource to ensure that road maintenance because potholes is not just a once-off event. Potholes will always be with us. The question is, do you have strategic capacity within the municipalities and the provinces to do uh, work in terms of closing in them all the time whenever they come up? Uh, how are you going to make sure that the, the goodwill you're talking about from the business people uh, is not squandered? Uh, you saw perhaps in one of the stories uh, we ran earlier, earlier, I think it was uh, Derek Fender in, uh, in, in the Northwest. Here's a guy who, using his own money, but also with, with a lot of help from local businesses, has been repairing, you know, potholes. He repaired 2,500 uh, potholes uh, last year. The municipality promises to assist or to work with him uh, I don't know if we heard the excuse from the municipal official that there was a breakdown of communication uh, and then the municipality then I mean, didn't deliver on the process they made. How are you going to make sure that such things actually don't happen and the goodwill you, you're saying has already been expressed by business people is not squandered? Um, Vuyo, if you were to ask me this question before Valazonga, I wouldn't have answers for you. The same as the guy who will send information on Twitter that there is a pothole, I wouldn't have anything to do with it. We've got an app today, and then uh, that app, people must use it. We're going to intensify information around it. You see a pothole, you see a crisis, we will be able to respond nationally. Uh, of potholes, wherever you are, we'll be able to respond. And if there is no response, we then need to know as to what is the cri what is the inability of that sphere of government to respond to that problem. Today you can tell me that you go to Tlokolan in the Free State or whatever, uh, the road is riddled with potholes. What is the government response to that? There is no response uh, because nobody knows exactly how to respond. So uh, Valazonke is a very exciting project in a sense that 
we will be able to respond to all these issues by deploying our capability and capacity through Sandral uh, on the ground to assist with the closure of portals. I didn't know, I've known that there are portals, but the stories that have come up, you guys report about them. You say that uh, is a fish pond, you know, like, and uh, I've encountered these portals myself. I've been in accident in terms of, uh, with my car, in terms of uh, puncture and all of that. Dangerous, right? Uh, so you get into a road, it is filled with potholes and nobody's responding to that. So today we will be able to respond to it. You come to me, watchdog, uh, and say that uh, there are potholes in such and such an area tomorrow. I will go down there and tell you that those potholes are closed. I've got the response to the outcries of our people rather than to sit down and not do anything about it. Money will find me on the way, the capability, the expertise that I've got and I've amassed uh, under my department, I'll utilize them all for the success of this particular project. And I'm confident we are going to succeed. As you tell me where the pothole is at, we'll be able to respond. Municipalities, like in Johannesburg, JRA, the new CEO was there. And then I said, in the next two weeks, I want your response as a municipality to the closure of portals. Johannesburg, uh, where we are now, there's a lot of portals, uh, but equally there's work that has been done to close <coughs> portals. So I intend to work with the municipalities, the metros, to assist them. So if you are a municipality, you come to me, you say there is a problem, I talk to Sandral, they will be able to respond to that given our app. And we are also collecting data as we speak. And then uh, with the engineering capacity Sandra has got, we should be able to respond. But the thing we're discussing with Treasury, if they give us money more in the kitty of the port closure of portals, Sandra will be able to do the work uh, going forward. And uh, we, we have already made submissions in terms of the medium term budget uh, to treat this as unforeseen um, mandate that we seek uh, to address as a department. Let's say you do indeed get a lot more money um, for, for, for this project. Have you thought of uh, maybe building a sort of public works program, you know, attached to uh, Valazonge, uh, given our high unemployment rate? No, part of Valazong, what we are doing, we are working with the CITES. We will attract young people into the project, uh, <coughs> Valazong, and they will be trained. And then uh, we will also address the question of skills for them in terms of this project. Um, when we evaluate in six months, I will tell you how many people have been uh, brought into the project. And uh, that is the mandate throughout the country uh, to do this particular work. So. Uh, it's a specific project which has got a short time frame to do a dent on the potholes, specific objectives, not all over the place. It doesn't mean that the work we do of building new roads and all of that is stopping. No. Uh, there is a project called Valazong that is focusing on closing potholes. So you've got the capability, you've got the money to close the potholes, come to the party. You are a municipality, you have the money, come to the party you don't have, we help you with the little we've got. Because you know who you, corruption. You know, some of these portals closing them is not a lot of money. Uh, but the point is that money in how it has been utilized, not even wisely, it has been embezzled. And uh, I went with the president in Limpopo, 42 kilometer road. It cost uh, that province above 400 uh, million. And the president asked me, what is this? And then he made his calculation, he said it cannot be. Uh, you need to explain as to, with your colleagues, how, how did they arrive at this? So as we do this work, and I'm confident with Sandral, with all the experience we've got, there's no project that has collapsed under our watchful eye from a point of view of, Sar of Sandral. But we have also realized that there is a gap in the provinces. Uh, you know, uh, the capacity that was there in the provinces was hollowed out. So literally, even things of 
closing portals, getting into the township, mobilizing the youth to close potholes and all of that as a capacity within a municipality has been outsourced because of tenders. Somebody must benefit. So, so how, but if a department of transport and public works at the local level, yellow machines and all of that being, you know, built in terms of that capacity and attracting people to oversee that work, we wouldn't be having a problem of potholes so, so in the areas that we live because that capacity was there before, but it was hollowed out. Look at the consequences now. I mean, so how are you going to deal with that? How are you going to deal with the skills deficit, you're saying, um, you find in the, in, the, in the provinces? How are you going to ensure uh, that shoddy workmanship, you know, is, is, is not going to be part of uh, uh, this project? Whose job is it going to be to, to, to ensure that you do like capacitate or skill um, those people, especially at local and at provincial level, who is going, whose responsibility is it going to be to ensure that they keep like their eyes wide open when it comes to where the money is going to go? We have already identified the weaknesses and the challenges with the provinces where they are, <coughs> uh, particularly in terms of capacity. We've got the capacity in this country, you don't have to get it from China, through Sandra. We leave that capacity with the municipality, with the province, and then they sustain it. Some of the things that used to work and they were killed in the system, we bring them back because they worked for us. Because we didn't have an outcry of who's going to close a pothole because a municipality, a province, uh, had the equipment and they had the personnel that look after the project of maintaining roads. Just like how JRA in Johannesburg came about. Just looking at road maintenance in the city. In some municipalities, you had the same arrangement, but uh, it has been hollowed out. And uh, what happens now? You want to fix a portal in the municipality, you must go and get Mvoko uh, 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 civils, civils <laughs> to come and, and close for that time. Yet, if you've got that capacity, they will be able then all the time to say to the municipality that pothole uh, within uh, seven months will be gone within a year. And then their job is just to close <coughs> potholes and to do that. It was there and then it was so. It is not the national minister. It's us all to say you don't have this capacity. You need to build it in the municipality and then bring these skills, recruit these unemployed youth and all of that into this, train them, their job in the municipalities to maintain and do this. You don't have to outsource. Just put them in the system uh, and all of that and then they do this work. So uh, this is what Valazonke, uh, when we come to six months, when we look at the objectives we set for ourselves, we will say we wanted this and that this is how far we have gone and we have achieved this much. Okay. To take a quick ad break. After the break, we look at your tweets and your questions and your comments. That's before my guest wears his other hat as the head of the ANC's elections. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're in conversation with uh, Transport Minister Fikile Mbalula following the launch today of Operation Valazonge uh, to deal with the problem of potholes on our roads. Let's, let's see what people are saying, people who have been uh, watching you uh, speak. Uh, please tell him, says Machawa Zoni, um, uh, we, the community of Blinkwater, Ward 1 in Guiani, are grateful for the tar road. Yeah pet in the back. <laughs> I, you guys have such a big appetite for whose words hold no value. Mbalula is just going to promise and lie some more and you just gonna smile. Oh, why? So, Make sure of the um, quality you use to fix these potholes last for a very long time. Thank you. After many years of crying and protesting about potholes, it's only now when voting is near that you want to show us that you care. How convenient of you. Do you want to comment? No, uh, Vuyo, the job has to be done. Uh, comments will always be there. 
a government must do its job, and we are a government at work. Uh, elections will come, and they will be judged by the people about uh, what we have done in terms of what is expected of us. Uh, there's a lot of work we have covered in terms of road infrastructure in the country. We do have challenges. When you are a government, you don't fight with the perception and the criticism. You listen and then you respond. And this is what we're doing. And I said, the president said, uh, we've got a big challenge of portals. We've got imbizos. You guys have said this imbizos, there is no value. Uh, there is value because we listen. We go on the ground. Next week, uh, this week on Friday, we'll be right in Mfule. Uh, people are saying <coughs> to the Minister of Transport, come into our portfolio, hey, we've got potholes. We went to Mafikeng. We went to Mangawung. We went to Pumalang. We need to respond. So we don't respond through Twitter. We talk to the ordinary people on the ground who tell us that in terms of the roads you have built, fine and good, but potholes, it's a problem. Can you attend to that? So this is our response. Uh, let's, see. Uh, let's, let's see if there's more. Um, uh, Vezwaingo Sikwabe says, Good evening, Vuyo and Minister Mbalula. We appreciate the initiative to repair our... I hope Delmas, Grill, Henrina and Standerton will be better after this operation. Okay. More, of the, more of, the, of, the, of, the, of the same. I mean, clearly, I mean, people appreciate uh, 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 this, this initiative. I mean, responding to the cry. Hopefully, uh, when you come back in six months, really, we'll, we'll be seeing a lot of progress. Uh, and, of course, I mean, you will have analyzed whatever information, you know, that you may have come across uh, that would... Um, hopefully improve um, the, the, the program. I want you to know where the other head, your other head, head of ANC election. Yeah. We have an election in a couple of years time. You're already seeing people beginning to move. Others leaving their political parties to go and join new initiatives. Others, I'm told, I mean, we are told, um, uh, are planning to come back from retirement as <laughs> judges um, to lead political parties. Just, just what have you been up to uh, as the ANC uh, on, on that front? Are you preparing uh, for, uh, for this election or are you still busy with, uh, you know, uh, the road to the December conference? The elections uh, to us... Uh, is about our manifesto. And uh, we have been uh, hard at work to get our manifesto to work for the people and uh, to respond to the needs of the people. Of course, we have met a lot of stumbling blocks along the way. What were those? Well, uh, in terms of the economy, first and foremost, COVID has been a, a biggest dent. Uh, those who are you know, uh, on the fringes and complaining, we didn't want us to talk about this uh, because uh, it really made a, a lot of dent in terms of our plans and reversed a lot of things that we wanted to do. But things were in bad terms of already. fighting. I mean, the economy was in bad shape before the, COVID. The economy was in bad shape before COVID in terms of recession. Uh, and uh, COVID just worsened. We had to be in the confines and stop production uh, for about a year or so. Uh, and uh, how many businesses that closed down? Look at the hospitality sector. Uh, our manufacturing uh, capacity also came to a halt. But uh, that is not the case. We are responding to that, that it may be. Uh, uh, going forward, so the economy was badly battered, and no, but, but, but remember, uh, are, but that is why we talk about the recovery. But when I mean, when 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 COVID hit, you already what 25 years um, into power, and you hadn't done much differently, if anything, um, and there were no signs that you you were uh, looking at doing things 
uh, uh, differently. So what's going to change now? Vuyo, when you sum up and say 25 years we were in power and nothing has been done. No, that's not what I said. Uh, 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 <laughs> that is really an exaggeration. No, no, that's not what I said. I said yes, we hadn't okay. done think anything differently and things were getting worse. Well, our manifesto says that uh, at some point we did veer away. <coughs> and now our manifesto committed to a social compact to redress uh, the crisis that we find ourselves in and uh, the commitment of the private sector to come to the party was overwhelming in this particular instance which is what we are dissecting at the present moment. President Bebke talks about it uh, but you know a compact comes from three dimensions business, government and labor and uh, for you to arrive at it and conclude on it, it means all these three-legged uh, spheres need to agree on that particular compact. And uh, we put an ambitious time frame of 100 days to have concluded on that, but it does not mean even if in 100 days we have not concluded, it will not be done. When it is done, it will enhance our response and uh, our uh, capabilities in terms of turning the economy around and uh, I think uh, to say that in the 25 years nothing you know can be pointed at no I didn't say no you, you didn't say that I'll get it wrong but let me say not you yeah there are others who want us to say nothing was done even in nine years when President Zuma was there and the biggest thing became the state capture that is why in our manifesto we said that nine years is the nine years of the good and the bad and uh, we seek to exercise the bad and carry on with the good there is the good that came out of that nine years in terms of delivery and we can point at that um, so to say nothing has been done uh, when I can go down on the ground and point at the things that have been done. I've just pointed to you the subject we're discussing about the roads. Roads have been built, but w there's been a crisis in terms of maintenance. And the engineering capacity uh, to maintain those roads has actually been hollowed out of the system and outsourced and rely on third parties. Of course, with a view of creating more jobs and building small, medium, macro enterprise, because the survival of a growing economy is the SMMEs. But that also has come in terms of our own experience right now uh, with the serious ramifications that we are witnessing now. Roads have been built, others are not complete. That is not government. Work is given to Vuyo. Vuyo is not doing what he's supposed to do. And then we hollowed out the capacity. We must go back to that. We learn from experience and our mistake and, uh, and, and correct. Of course, uh, the volume of criticism is growing because the platforms and the cacophony of this uh, seem to be overwhelming on us. Uh, but uh, we hope that uh, we should be in a position to inspire, but at the same time, to be able to tell our story through actions, not uh, arguing with everyone else about what we see is a weakness. When people tell us that they are potholes, it's not for us to philosophize about it. Let's just go and close them. Well, um, <laughs> you know, um, last week I spoke to the president of Business Unit South Africa about the social compact you were referring to. I mean, it's more than two months after that deadline uh, of 100 days passed. And he was quite scathing about government. But uh, uh, you are refusing to lead. Uh, but if anything, you are actually to blame as government for the lack of progress. The unions, whom I had a couple of days later, I mean, and civil society, I had also didn't have nice things to say about the government uh, uh, and, and the reason why uh, the 100 days deadline wasn't met. And if this social compact is the key to 
working together, but also putting good ideas out there that will ensure that our economy recovers and we address the issue of unemployment. If you are to blame and you are refusing to lead, I mean, what, what, what should we do? What's going to happen? It, it is not true that there is no leadership. There is leadership. The weakness is that I'll be sitting here and then uh, it will just turn into a gossip that I'm gossiping the president of uh, Business Unity South Africa. Have a round table and ask business and ask government and ask labor, where is the compact and what is delaying the compact? For government to go out and complain against labor and all of that about the matter we are resolving, does it assist our movement forward? What, in, what, what in your understanding is, is the reason why um, there are, we still don't have there, a social there, compact? There are varied uh, reasons Some from, of them? All, from all uh, the, the role players. And uh, I, I, I don't want to talk about that because uh, at the present moment, uh, we are at an advanced stage uh, to reaching uh, an agreement on all the issues of disagreement, which I think that uh, government must come to the party and talk about uh, those issues uh, either at the end or now. And that is what is important. So should I raise one? And then uh, Labour will come and say, no, we are uh, at negotiations and discussions with everyone around the table to to, to find a solution, not to have endless uh, uh, discussions uh, with everyone without a solution. Government, at the end, we want a solution on those matters. Okay, let's just say then, let's accept what you are saying, or say it, I accept what you're saying, that everyone has a contribution to uh, the current uh, state of affairs. What are you prepared to concede to as a government minister? Um, as something that is, in other words, your part of the blame. What have you do not done as the government, which also contributed to the stalling of this process? Well, government have done everything in its power and will continue to do so to find a solution and uh, an agreement uh, on the questions that are hanging in the social compact uh, I'm saying so for you because uh, it is not uh, water under the bridge. It is something that uh, we're looking forward to and deliver on it. And when we find uh, agreement, we will even talk about the delays that uh, led us not to agree on the 100 days. Like I said, 100 days was an ambitious uh, time frame. Uh, which we thought by now will easily meet because everybody said no government must lead government must do that uh, at the end of the day uh, we will come out and basically pronounce what we need to do mm -hmm. now you must understand that um, when we differed some many years ago around gear uh, there was no compact around that and then uh, when we differed about private sector investment into the economy, uh, there was no issue about that. Uh, now everybody says we want to invest, we want to come to the party and do the following, but it is not without uh, conditions. You may look at it. So that, that's the thing, and what, the for more instance, time... what we agreed need to be done in terms of ESCOM and bundling process, mm. uh, that we said that... Uh, for ESCOM to function in a proper way, we need to unbundle. But uh, Labour and everybody came and opposed uh, uh, that, that. And maybe on the part of business for them to say that uh, uh, we are not providing leadership in this particular instance probably is because they would have expected with or without uh, other partners, we must move ahead. And uh, we have not chosen that path. Uh, but uh, when the time comes to lead, uh, that is going to happen. Okay, back to the um, topic of the day and where we were. I believe we still have some tweets, then I'll allow you to make some closing comments. Uh, Valazonge, it's a shame government is trying to hijack winnings of the insurance company's projects to close all potholes 
in GP. Mbalula is just politicking. I had too many accidents in Limpopo because of the potholes. Flayfontein, Elim, and Mashao disaster. Please fix this. We can't trust anything said by anyone within the ANC ranks. 28 years of reaction, or reactionism. Whether they close the potholes or not, we are tired of them. Let's see how a new dispensation can deal with issues of our roads. Keep the good work, Mr. Fixit. Soldier on, my leader. I hope other departments will copy what you are doing. Very good indeed. We really appreciate it. Evening, we are Minister of Transport. I appreciate the good decision of closing potholes. I wish road for Vembe District uh, from Mukula to Halambani will be attended as well because it's so bad. I got punctures always on this road. Anything to say? I'm very happy with you. I mean, uh, the people agree with what uh, we are doing and uh, they don't say it's long overdue. They stated the problem. And uh, the government responds uh, to the issue of potholes, which many years ago you might have just treated as a by-the-way issue. It has become a topical matter. And uh, it also points to us and the weaknesses uh, and the challenges that we've got and how we need to improve on those. And we learn from, from each of these projects uh, what and how to make government effective and uh, how we build a capable state. Uh, a capable state comes with its capacity to respond to a crisis like this and uh, demonstrate that certain things can be done. And in that process, you don't become a Father Christmas. You, you lead all sectors along uh, who come along with you, but you provide leadership. So uh, that is what is expected of government. And I'm, I'm quite excited. It is a very constructive criticism. And of course, uh, naysayers who think that all the time what government is expected to do and respond to issues is because of elections. Elections or no elections, government must do its work. And to that person who says, ah, too late because they're going to remove you as government. Um, governments can be removed. Uh, being in government to us as the ANC has not been a given. We have worked for it. And then uh, that's what we are doing today because we are answering to the mandate South Africans have given to us. Uh, if we were to sit down here today and uh, say that uh, because of local government, defend ourselves that power is not going in 2024. This power was predicted to be going many years ago, but we still came back when we were still around. The ANC must do what it is right, including its government, to serve our people with honesty and truthfulness. Come. And that is what uh, will win us votes and make us to come back to power. It's not a given. We can't be removed. We will be removed by the people of this country uh, if they so feel that enough, it is enough with us. Do you think it will happen in 2024? I don't think it will happen in 2024, but... Uh, leave that uh, to 2024 and uh, i think what will happen in 2024 the anc will return in power uh, overwhelmingly but okay. uh, that overwhelming power is not a given it has never been and uh, the possibility that we can be removed out of power others celebrate because of uh, the local government elections but i can tell you that uh, in terms of what we are doing on a daily basis, we answer to what we said we'll do to the people of South Africa. Uh, we will go back and ask for a fresh mandate, and hopefully it will be overwhelming. Mr. Valazonge, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. And that's the Minister of uh, Transport following that launch uh, today of uh, that operation, Valazonge, uh, to fix the country's potholes. And that's our show for tonight. To join us again tomorrow evening, same time. Have a good night.